Hi, this is Todd Nettleton, the host of The Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Thank you for being a VOM Radio listener. If you've listened recently, you probably already know that this is release week for my new book, When Faith is Forbidden, 40 Days on the Front Lines with Persecuted Christians, published by Moody Publishers. To celebrate the new book and to thank our podcast listeners, we thought we'd share the first two chapters of the audiobook with our VOM Radio podcast family. If you missed the first chapter, you'll want to go back in the podcast stream and give it a listen. The audiobook will be available soon from your favorite audiobook outlet. You can learn more about the book, and there are links to order a copy at www.whenfaithisforbidden.com. Again, the website, www.whenfaithisforbidden.com. And now here's the second chapter of the audiobook, The First Travel Day on our 40-Day Journey to Meet Persecuted Christians. Day 1. Beyond Our Control The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9. Yea, Sudan, 1998. It's not unusual your first day overseas to be wide awake at 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the morning. I've heard lots of theories about how jet lag can be beaten, but so far I don't find any that actually work. Jet lag just keeps beating me. During the day, get as much sunlight as you can. Other than that, you just have to fight through it. Our team wasn't supposed to go to Ye first during our time in Sudan, but the first lesson of travel is that sometimes things don't go according to plan. Our goal was to go to Turile. It was in Aien, a village near Turile, that Pastor Abraham Yakdeng had led a church of 400 Sudanese Christians with his small red pocket Bible, the only copy of the scriptures, in the entire congregation. Abraham had been thrilled when a previous VOM team brought boxes and boxes of Bibles to Turile. The thought that every family in his church could have their own copy of the Bible was almost too amazing to consider. A member of the VOM team asked Abraham what his favorite verse was, and he quoted Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Four days after that conversation with Abraham and those Bibles being delivered, radical Islamic Mujahideen attacked Ayin. The just-delivered Bibles were burned. Over 20 people were kidnapped from the village, and Pastor Abraham was shot in the head. The team I was part of, months after that brutal attack, planned to replace the destroyed Bibles. But heavy rains in Turile have flooded the airstrip at both ends, and the pilots aren't sure the dry part in the middle is long enough to land and then take off again with the twin-engine Russian Antonovs we've chartered for aid delivery. So our team leader decided to switch the order of our trip, We'd come to Ye first. Hopefully, we could get to Turile in a few days. Except now we're in Ye, and we can't find a ride. We have Bibles to take to the SPLA, Sudan People's Liberation Army troops, closer to the battle lines, but the truck we thought we'd rent isn't available. There's another vehicle available, but they're waiting on a delivery of fuel. We're staying with very kind missionaries who are taking wonderful care of us, but we are most definitely not accomplishing what we set out to. Finally, we found other mission workers heading our way and joined them. But two hours into our trip, the bridge over an unmapped river was out. Our lead vehicle plunged in, attempting to ford the river. They made it halfway across before the rain-swollen rush of water began to slide the four-wheel drive truck downstream. Our teammates climbed out the window onto the roof of the vehicle, and we were able to throw them a rope and stop the truck from sliding any further, as well as give them a wet way back to shore. 
So instead of handing Bibles to soldiers near the front lines, we're stuck here, waiting for the river to go back down so we can retrieve the other truck. What are you doing, Lord? We're on your side. We want to replace Bibles the enemy destroyed. Couldn't you at least stop the rain long enough for the airstrip to be dry? Couldn't you at least arrange so we could get a truck when we needed one? Couldn't you keep the river levels low enough that we could cross? Of course, God can do anything he wants to do. He can stop rain or make it rain. He can dry up rivers or make them overflow. But on my trip to Sudan, nothing seemed to happen according to our carefully laid plans. Why? I wish I could tell you. I wish I could point to some significant milestone result from our trip and say, see, that's why God let the rains come. I wish I could point to some soldier we handed a Bible to in a place we didn't plan to be, who went on to become Sudan's Billy Graham. We did deliver Bibles, even though some of them had to be laid out in the sun to dry before being read. We did deliver food, in one case taking high-protein mix to a hospital, you and I would probably call it a clinic, caring for dozens of malnourished kids. We fellowshiped with the missionaries who hosted us, and I hope we blessed and encouraged them. But due to circumstances beyond our control, we didn't accomplish the goals we set out to achieve. Beyond our control. Those aren't words I like. I want to be in control. I want to make decisions. I want to make a plan and then work with others to see it come to fruition. I want to know the outcome. I want control. But once we choose between cornflakes or toast for breakfast, isn't most of the rest of the day beyond our control? Isn't the whole point of the Christian life to give up control to a loving, holy Father who will organize our journey through life for our greater good? As Solomon tells us, we plan our ways, but it is the Lord who establishes our steps. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9. Do you believe that? Do I? It's easy to get frustrated at all the things beyond our control. A flooded airstrip, a plane that doesn't show up on time, a whole town that doesn't have any gas for sale, or Closer to home, a job situation that doesn't go according to plan. A doctor telling you it's going to require more tests to be sure. A child consistently choosing an ungodly path. Life is beyond our control. Death is beyond our control. So we have to adjust. We have to be ready to cheerfully change course. We must allow his timing to trump our plans, and we won't always know why. Why is for him to figure out. It's beyond our control. For reflection, are there areas in your life where you're trying to exercise control, but you need to acknowledge are beyond your control? What are those areas? What would it require for you to surrender the need to be in control? For your journal, write about one of those areas and what it will look like as you surrender control of that part of your life this week to your loving Father and allow Him to establish your steps. Prayer Father, I admit I want to be in control. I want to make my plans and have you bless what I want to do. Help me trust you to see what I cannot see. Help me surrender my need for control and allow you ultimate control to trust your plans are for my greater good. Help me each day to seek your face and your will and allow you to work in and through me to accomplish your purposes for me and those around me. From my journal, October 31, 1998. Yea, Sudan, addressed to my wife, Shar. I am praying for you, though, 
I have asked God to send angels to surround our home and protect it from the attacks of the enemy or anything else that would cause grief. The rest of the story. One of the nights I was in Sudan, my wife, who was sick while I was gone, woke up in the middle of the night. Looking up from the bed, she saw clearly the outline of men's shadows on the mini blinds covering the two windows of our bedroom. She got up and looked out each window, but couldn't see anyone outside. Yet instead of fear, she felt a sense of complete peace and immediately got back into bed and fell back into a deep, restful sleep. She and I both believe in angels. You've been listening to a special podcast excerpt of the new book, When Faith is Forbidden, 40 Days on the Front Lines with Persecuted Christians by Todd Nettleton with The Voice of the Martyrs, published by Moody Publishers. You can learn more about the book and order your copy at www.whenfaithisforbidden.com. Again, the website, www.whenfaithisforbidden.com.